Hello everyone and welcome to Ion Africa. My name is Awo Sar. I am Assistant Director for Academic Affairs at the African Studies Center at Michigan State University. And Ion Africa is our weekly seminary series. I am very delighted today to have Dr. Emily Riley as our guest speaker. And before I pass it over to her, uh, a brief introduction. So Dr. Emily Liley is a full-time research professor at the Center for Asian and African Studies at El Colegio de Mexico in Mexico City. She holds a PhD in cultural anthropology from Michigan State University, specializing in African studies and gender in global context. She holds a BA in cultural anthropology, French and international studies from Oregon State University. Dr. Riley is the current president of the Senegambian Studies Group, a coordinate organization of the African Studies Association. She is a former assistant director of the Kansas African Studies Center at the University of Kansas. Her ethnographic research conducted in Wolof and French for over 15 years in Dakar, Senegal, focuses on cultural, religious, and political representations of Teranga the wall of philosophy of generosity, hospitality, and sociability. In her teaching career, she has taught a number of courses, including gender, power, and the nation, introduction to African cultural studies, and biography and gender during her time at El Colegio de Mexico. She is currently teaching a wall of language and culture course for Spanish speakers. Some of her publications include Politics of Teranga, Gender, Hospitality, and Power, Samajigen, Women and Women-Led Associations in a New Era of Politics in Dakar, Senegal, Chaos in Comedy, Social Media, Activism and Democracy in Senegal, Guests of God, The Lion, an Urban Sufi Community of Dakar, Senegal. Her manuscript, Teranga Republic, Women's Authority and Politics in Senegal is due to be released with Indiana University Press in spring 2025. Dr. Riley is currently working on a new manuscript project regarding Ajami texts and Quranic school schooling among the Lion in Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, and Italy. Thank you so much for being here, Emily. <laughs> Assalamu uh, alaikum, everyone. Um, it's it's really um, a pleasure to sort of be back uh, at home, although digitally. Um, I'm I'm just uh, MSU is is a second home to me. Um, as as I was telling Awa, I I spent about nine years living there, doing my PhD and. And particularly the the African Studies Center um, was and remains to be a really a, a, a space um, that I that I call home that I consider um, a, you know a part of my sort of intellectual uh, family and so I'm I'm really happy to be here and it's um, kind of fun, right, to, I, I did an Eye on Africa, I think when I was still finishing um, on, on, I don't even remember now, but <laughs> um, so it's it, it's fun to see sort of how, um, how I've evolved personally and, and to, um, to, to think about sort of my roots um, in, at MSU. So um, what I wanna do um, in my, uh, talk today um and i'm hoping that i can share my screen yeah okay um so what i'm hoping to do in this talk is um as awa mentioned um i'm i'm have uh, my book manuscript um with indiana press uh on the topic that i'll be talking about today and so i wanted to give a little bit of a sort of a few ethnographic anecdotes and in a, a general sense of of the, the kind of the argument of the book and and the the substantiating um underlying aspects of of where i'm sort of pulling that argument um and so and then also because it's about women in political space in in senegal given everything that's going on um, currently 
um, with the elections that has that are specific to even the women in the book. Um, I, I wanted to kind of also reflect a little bit on um, what I'm arguing in the book and extend it to um, kind of the the current um, the current situation. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to find. I'm sort of currently printing out my thing as we speak. So, and my. Uh, So as um, as Awa mentioned, the the book um, the book is about uh, you know examining um, or the book title I should say is um, Taranga Republic Women's Politics and Authority in in Senegal and <clears throat> so what I want to focus sort of on um, in this uh, the this talk is one um, kind of tracing the connections between um, women's social labor and their strategies um, for political authority, uh, contemplating the ways in which women do politics or, or practice politics and its reflection on economic and political processes through um, the concept of teranga. Um, and then, as I mentioned, sort of reflect on women's politics in the current um, political climate um, <clears throat> in Senegal. So I want to start with um, an anecdote, a sort of a field note um, from a, a, an important event um, I attended last year. So I sat among a crowd of people wearing vibrant colored dresses and tunics, most likely made for the occasion. We hugged the shade provided by the stadium overhang and were entertained by a dance troupe that swayed and sang in unison. The Saharan sun was unrelenting as always. The media cameras captured the entrances of customary and religious leaders and state politicians. Another band from Mauritania played guitar and drums while dancers swirled in their ample dress, flapping their arms like cranes taking flight. The place was packed with people who had traveled various dis distances to witness the crowning of a queen, a linger in Wolof. In the middle of the stadium was a small stage with a throne and two smaller chairs decorated in plush red velvet fabric and gold trim. The stage faced the crowds, but especially a group of other similarly clad thrones for the customary leaders important to the event. Aidan Boj, a politician I had spent a decade shadowing, was unanimously voted by the Fraternal Union of the Mboj family in Senegal and the diaspora to receive the highest honor of becoming a linger because she had represented them well on the national and international stage. The Federation is an organization that brings together extended members of the Mboj family, living in all regions of Senegal, the Gambia, and in the diaspora. Upon arriving to the stadium, Ida walked slowly around with her entourage of security, griots or praise singers, and journalists while she waved and greeted the crowd. She placed her she took her place on the throne, accompanied by two younger women who were matching who wore matching flowing indigo dyed dresses and headscarves adorned with orange colored jewelry weaved into their braids that peeked out of the headscarves. They donned a sash strewn across their chest diagonally, like the style worn for a beauty pageant. Ida was num wore numerous cloths layered on her body. The most notable of the fabrics was an intricately woven siru rabal or a cotton wrap skirt that is customarily given to a woman during important life moments such as marriage or the birth of her child or being crowned a queen. Ida's headdress was an elaborate wig embroidered with gold and silver coins and cowrie shells that have significant meanings such as womanhood and wealth. You could tell she understood the weight of the moment as well 
posing stoically and looking like the queen in waiting she was. Among the speakers was a family griot who accompanied Ida during her political and familia events, serving as a mirror to her successes. He, he took to the microphone and said, today is a momentous day, a day that when we wake up tomorrow, we will continue to reap its benefits. Today we name Aidan Boj the Linger, the Super Linger. There's something that is erased, but also something that is created. I say to you, those of you who are embarrassed by their heritage, you should know that no matter if you are bigger than life, you should return to your culture and traditions. It's important. Today, for the first time in Senegalese history, a woman is celebrated by her family. So we say, Alhamdulillah. Politicians such I, as I, the I, I don't want to distract you, Emily. I don't want to distract you. Sorry, but I think if you use the slideshow mode, it, we might see better. Right now, we're not saying it very well. Oh, you're not okay. How are you seeing it? With the other slides below, it's not oh, focused on, on one slide. So I think use slideshow. Is that better? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, so politicians such as the female mayor of Ida's town of Bombay, where she had previously served as mayor, commented on the weight of the occasion and offered reflections on Ida's accomplishments and qualities as a good leader. The griot woman who sat next to me, Mamseni, yelled out Ida's praises with her megaphone she carried around. She was a longtime member of Ida's entourage and someone I had known from all the different campaigns I participated in over the years. Kings and leaders of other parts of the Mboj family performed a short ceremony that was broadcast on YouTube, TV, TV channels, and TikTok accounts. And Ida emerged with an additional crown of gold that towered over her headdress. She then took to the microphone and made a few pronouncements. And now to my coalition colleagues, she said, you must know that we are, of course, part of the same family. I'm Bokolanyu. We share the same values, local values, which we should apply socially and politically, values that you are defending here. We women, she said, we can protect it, meaning tradition, give it importance and a place within government positions by standing up for our people, our family, Sunni Mbok. So in this, uh, in, in the, um, the two photos here, I, I love this sort of contrast um, between um, on the left, the, the, the scene that I'm depicting of Ida in the middle um, during her crowning ceremony, and then the, the genius work of the former, and I suppose still current um, cartoonist for the national um, Senegalese newspaper, Le Soleil, Samba Fall, um, who has, you know, who, who's sort of depicting, um, you know, women surrounding a, a male king um, in kind of a similar setting, right? But the tables have sort of slightly turned. So the event, the event I depict here marked 10 years since I started following the political activities of Aydan Boj. In fact, I was present when Ida inaugurated the very stadium where it took place during her time as mayor of Bombay, a dry and hot town in the heart of the peanut basin of central Senegal. Bombay, Ida's hometown, is significant as it was a central part of the contact between the Murid Sufi community and the French colonial administration during the height of the peanut industry and remains an important space of Murid domination. This theatrical ceremony also took place at just shy of a year before the 2024 presidential elections for which Ida would eventually launch her campaign. Among some of the distinguished guests is Usman Sonko, president of the coalition Yewi Askanwi, to whom Ida praises in her speech as part of the same family that shares the same values that she highlights as the key to a new kind of politics. So in this photo, 
um, you can see, um, you know, the what she's looking at, right, from the stage, um, these dignitaries, as well as um, the customary chiefs. Um, and then you can see up at the very top, um, Usman Sanko kind of in the beige green um, outfit, um, chatting with his, uh, his th those next to him. So he, he was present at this, um, at this kind of theatrical moment in which Ida is somewhat positioning herself within, um, you know, within her own kind of political uh, project, but also aligning herself with Sonko, who um, is the main opposition upon, you know, opponent to Makisal um, and and others in the upcoming election that I'll speak about a little bit. Um, later. The tumultuous year leading up to the election would see Ida being disqualified from the presidential race and ultimately backing Sonko and his coalition, despite Sonko himself being ineligible based on his imprisonment following a lengthy and contentious trial for suspicions of rape and inciting the youth. The uncertainty of the upcoming election was considerable, with an unpopular outgoing president a wildly popular opposition candidate whose political future was in question, and the record number of female presidential candidates, including Ida. In this regard, the speeches by Ida's Grillo, the oral historian who communicates her praises, and Ida herself, along with the spectacle of the show, communicate an imagery of a new structure of authority, a particularly post-colonial authority in which one could imagine a woman at its helm. So my book considers the processes of women's political, women, pol women politicians' cultivation of authority in contemporary Senegalese politics. The opening anecdote of Ida's coronation is a particular moment of a dramatization of power. However, throughout this book, I aim to highlight the less visible and daily constructions of authority by women found in the practices of Taranga. That is, women's social labor and its consequences for their political identities. In other words, how did Ida arrive at becoming crowned a queen among some of the most consequential politicians in contemporary Senegalese politics? What do the strategies of women in Senegalese politics tell us about questions of post-colonial identities, gender and politics, and gender politics? Ida is a small, is part of a small yet growing number of women in elected state politics who serve in parliament, are mayors and city councilors. Alongside many women, she was an integral part of the movement for women's political equality called Parité, which was voted into law in 2010. By 2012, when the law took effect, the number of women in parliament rose from 22% to 42%. And it hovers around that. I think the highest it's been is, is 47%. Um, the women like Ida, who demonstrate considerable popularity, as well as those less visible, are and have been fundamental to the nature of politics in Senegal. Moreover, Ida and the anecdote of her coronation demonstrate a kind of authority that I see as created by continuous processes of bargaining, and improvising of historical and social identities as a way to navigate a plurality of spheres and logics in the post-colonial present. The particular logic that I identify as the source of women's political strategy in Senegal is Teranga, a philosophy in the Wolof language that symbolizes both the actions of honor and generosity, as well as the characteristics derived from such actions. Put another way, the authority and prestige bestowed upon Ida at her coronation is the result of years of the particular social labor that is Teranga. So I um, I wanted to point out um, the 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 kind of philosophy of of Teranga is this idea of um, the proverb that that says "Am alal nitokugin." Um, it's good to have wealth, but it's better to have 
people, that people are, are our wealth. Um, and so thinking about that, sort of this idea of um, Taranga as a, as a material and kind of immaterial reciprocity um, that, uh, that is formed by and through material objects and, 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 and verbalities and, and um, ways of being, you know, generous to, towards others um, is sort of through, through materiality yet is really about sort of the social um, construction behind it. Um, and so I, I think of um, Taranga as, as a kind of system of private and public um, expressions of reciprocity, um, both sociological and, and, and so social and, and, and economic, um, and as a way that unifies individuals and communities um, and and following the fact that um, Fatu Sarso, uh, a main feminist of Senegal, sort of conceives of Taranga as the major point of reference for social um, and moral uh, uh, morality among uh, Wolof society. And I'll talk about sort of what I mean in terms of the the Wolofization of, of Senegalese society here in a minute. So I therefore posit that we can only understand women's roles in Senegalese state politics and Taranga as their political strategy by discussing what I identify as a few of the historical processes in, intrinsic to their praxis. Um, these include what Mamadou Jouf calls the Islamo Wolof model and the Wolofization and urbanization of Senegalese society. Another is the commercialization and gendering of Taranga and the domestic space, as well as the marketization of women's social labor and the social cultural connections to changing economics. Thinking about this in a somewhat cumulative and chronological nutshell, women's political practice and authority is the result of a national culture built on Sufi and Wolof principles in the post-colony whose influences on state institutions and socioeconomic norms have meant that a concept such as Taranga comes to represent a particularly gendered and feminine subject whose identity is tied to domestic values. So then these domestic values of hospitality, reciprocities and solidarity are reproduced and commercialized in the popular imagination as well as instrumentalized by government and non-governmental purposes of such as development projects that have pigeonholed women's economic and political imports for national economic development. Especially during times of acute economic crises, women's social labor and capital have become the safeguard for struggling families. It is in these spaces that, um, that materialize and marketize women's social capital that new forms of female patron client networks form and create new female leadership that begin to organize and advocate for women's greater participation in state and de decision-making and authority. The population of Senegal is about 18 million. 45% live in urban areas, 23% live in the capital Dakar. Given what many call Wolofization, or the domination of Wolof language in mostly urban spaces that goes beyond ethnicity, Senegal has become associated with Wolof. In 2008, it was said that although 44% of people were ethnically Wolof, 90% of spoke the Wolof language. However, Wolof is just one of six officially recognized languages in Senegal, along with Serer, Ular, Soninke, Mandinka, and Jola, and yet has long grown to be the lingua franca of Senegal. There are most likely about 65 different languages spoken within Senegambia. Keys points to several phenomena that have led to Wolof's dominance. The French chose Wolof sites such as Saint-Louis and Dakar 
for their colonial administration and therefore interacted with Wolof elites. Wolof merchants and Sufi marabouts were key to the colonial economy of peanut crops, which traveled between their urban centers and then the eventual migrations to cities of all ethnicities once the monocrop economies dwindled. The Wolofization of Senegalese society has also led to the adoption of particularly Wolof ideologies as re representative of national identity writ large. Considering Senegal as the land of Teranga or the national soccer team as the, the lions of Teranga demonstrates a normalizing of Wolof language and culture and Teranga as a symbol of national identity. A particular focus of the book is locating the aspects of Teranga that represent their dynamics within changing gender relations and their import for women's political praxis. Although Teranga is not etymologically gendered, in practice it is. Because I identify Teranga as being the core component in the history and nature of women's participation in state politics, naturally we must also examine how Teranga is both a product and reflection of what Maram Gay argues is a gendering process, rather than seeing gender as a historical given when thinking about women's political praxis. That is, understanding the ways in which Teranga and political performance have become particularly gendered. It is in this regard that I identify what I call the Teranga ethos, in order to place women's political processes among a myriad of highly gendered performances of generosity, hospitality, and honor. Imagining Teranga as a cultural artifact that draws upon sexual imagery that reflects normalcies of gender behavior show the ways gender is integral to modern Senegalese politics. The opposition to women in politics and public space in general also lies within the connection between women's sexuality and culture, um, which is part of the domestic sphere and therefore women's participation in what is men's natural domain of politics, bringing disorder and, and polluting pu public institutions. Thinking back to Ida's coronation ceremony, her mention of Teranga as both the generosity um, of her of her niece um, as as in I guess I, I took this part out but in in the same um, in the anecdote that I share with about Ida she she thanks her um, her niece who was a major organizer of the event and citing that um, that their relationship and 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 the um, the the, the relationship between the two women um, was about sort of about Teranga um, as well as locating sort of um, the encouragement that she felt that her niece Ndai was giving her by helping her organize the event um, kind of meant that she was in, encouraging this sort of style of, of, of relating to others as well. Um, and so she, 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 so I'm sort of arguing that if we think about that relationship, that the generosity that is um, that is coming from her, the 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 social labor of her of her niece, um, and then linking this also to uh, the the image that you see here of um, a drink labeled um, taranga as kind of a material representation of of hospitality and 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 femininity um, that they they sort of highlight this gendered labor of of women um, that we and and linked to sexual imagery that we see in this uh, this advertisement that you see in music television shows um, that that sort of pinpoint um, these values with a particular feminine subjectivity. Um, so the construction of a women of a woman's prestige is therefore situated within the semantic field of feminized traits and linguistic creativities reproduced in popular media and in daily utterances. 
Teranga has become commodified through processes of, of literally branding products such as Cafe Teranga, uh, which you can find in grocery stores, car dealerships, mining companies, disposable water, all labeled um, Teranga. In the physical and media landscape of an urban space like Dakar, commercials, billboards, grocery stores are packed with images such as cleaning products with scenes of domesticity, um, littering, littering the grocery store. Um, television shows call, such as Ndjeg Akram, a woman, a wife in her home, um, debate how women can make their home more inviting to guests or interview, um, and, and including other episodes in which they interview um, a particular kind of griot, which is called a laube. Um, they're sort of thought of as masters of seduction, um, you know, giving women tips about the ways that they can sort of ease um, their husband's um, uh, interest in them by lighting incense, by um, wearing beads around their hips. Um, and so, so you see sort of in this media scape how um, this, the, the link between domesticity, marriage, um, sexuality, and, um, and the, and, and Taranga become quite present. Beyond the materiality of Taranga, development programs have sought to align value with values by seizing on the moral philosophy of Taranga and targeting women's associations as vectors for a woman-driven woman informal economy. Principles such as solidarity and mutual aid that had historically been expressed through modest money pooling to help women and their peers with unexpected or planned expenses became marketing strategies for how to turn loans into profits. Associations or solidarity groups were formed into state-sponsored women's groups or groupements de, de promotion féminine or economic interest groups. In some cases, there were competitions for extra funding given to the associations based on their performance in terms of savings. Mariam Lowe argues that female entrepreneurs in Senegal, Mali, operating in the informal economy are often, quote, confined to survival activities with limited possibilities for capital, capital accumulation, unquote which steer them towards marketing, not only material culture, but cultural values. In her study, Lowe examines women's development of a cult image by naming associations and enterprises based on values such as honor, pride, and respect in order to circumscribe impediments inherent to the precarious nature of the informal economy. She, she astutely ties the recognition that Credit worthiness requires a certain way of being and acting in the projection of a positive self-image with women's successes in micro enterprises. Newspaper articles, new, uh, archives in Senegal show an explicit link between the exploitation of local forms of the elements of Taranga, such as solidarity built from women's social networks for economic gain. These feminine spaces of Micro enterprises and associations have also created a fleet of female leadership that became the springboard for the Parité movement. And part of the part of the aim of the movement <clears throat> was to have female representation and authority over state resources destined um, for women's economic projects. In Ida's anecdote, there are several processes going on. One is the obvious display of female power and persuasion in politics, as well as language of representation and doing things according to a kind of Senegalese <clears throat> identity and Senegalese culture or traditions. Less obvious is the backstory of how these types of authority come to fruition, how the construction of a Senegalese feminine subject is how women particularly make space for themselves <clears throat> in politics. One of the spaces that Taranga is most public is during ceremonies such as weddings and baptisms. Family ceremonies are the major sites where Senegalese families 
gather to celebrate births, new unions, and the lives of loved ones who have passed on. There are also opportunities to create affiliations within and between families and affirm these bonds. For the women that mostly control the planning and organization, as well as the performance of ceremonies, they're especially crucial spaces for the manifestation and cultivation of honor, reputation, and worth. Women's hard work over years of saving, organizing, and establishing themselves as respectable women through various day-to-day -day reciprocities come to fruition during ceremonies, and their social hierarchy is dependent upon the mastery of social visits, hosting guests, and providing monetary and emotional exchanges between friends and strangers. Family ceremonies being the most visible spaces in which Taranga is given and, and, re and received. If a member of Ida's party was in need, she went personally or sent someone from her team to visit them. Between legislative sessions in Dakar or trips with the ministry, Ida was back in Bombay making social calls. In return, her supporters remained loyal, saying her praises in public and reciprocated by not only voting for her, but showing up for events, political rallies, and her life moments. When Ida's mother died, for example, uh, community members attended the funeral in mass to show support for Ida, as well as for the legacy of, of her mother, a, fam or a formidable community politician in her own right, employing the same personal style of politics. Therefore, for Ida and all the women politicians I spent time with, Taranga is their politics. Investing in the life events of others is their politics. Putting in the groundwork of visiting, receiving, giving, and attesting is their politics. Women, women's roles within politics and the significancies of Taranga have a long history. From women asserting considerable power among the patronage operations of the king or the more modern day politician to then serving a representative role for men's campaigns. Now, as women are taking leading roles in government, these realities have new implications for governance by making visible the hidden work of women. Therefore, um, I argue that with the advent of more women in state politics, their successes are due in part to their abilities to translate their social labor in ceremonies and domestic spaces into political strategy. The significance of Ida being crowned a linger dates back to the time of the Wallow Kingdom, as does the importance of ceremonies to women's political authority, as the linger played a large political role as the guardian of family goods, of which good management determines success. Therefore, women's involvement in festivities and gift giving has been a central way of deriving personal power and influence, as well as assuring the future of one's family. I argue that this is an art of governance that relies on the principles and practices of Taranga, what I call the Taranga Republic, or a fait de Taranga instead of, for example, the Fait Républicain or the French Republic, a different kind of social organization based on principles of abstract identities and citizenship. Senegalese politics, um, women who are particularly adept at the art of Taranga, fortifying their relationships through financial and social prestations, have garnered significant support and success in state as well as local politics. The women who sp specifically operate within the Taranga Republic, as we have seen with the political strategies of Aydem Boj, have emerged both as part of women's engagement in the Senegalese political economy and marginalization from it. Their successes in politics rest on their abilities to translate these negotiations of private authority to a style of public governance um, and these negotiations tell us a great deal about the post-colonial anxieties and plasticities that they affront. In fact, this art of governance um, is inspired by parallel forms of, con of conduct, what Abdurrahman Sek calls a political economy of Taranga. 
a culture of governance among women in spaces of associations and solidarity groups that support their communities economically and politically, politically and has functioned apart from the male dominated political economy. This marginalization meant that women and their activities were relegated in state sponsored and non-governmental development projects, which turned women's associations previously more about solidarity than money-making into monetized spaces responsible for national development. These realities both limited women's political possibilities as they were too tied up with development while at the same time helping to produce a class of women political leaders. So this is a, a, a photo from um, Ida's, uh, uh, and a rally I, I went uh, to with Ida during her 2017 legislative parliamentary campaign. Investments in kinship and social and family ceremonies as an economic alternative has become the norm due to several factors. Decades of post-colonial mismanagement leading to staggering unemployment due to structural adjustment programs beginning in the JUF administration phasing out of government positions and state employee salaries, and immigration in search of work in the absence of productive possibilities. The devastating effects of Senegal's devaluation of its currency in 94 and structural adjustment policies beginning in the 1980s have left many to invest in social capital, such as the circulation of wealth during family ceremonies. Investing in human capital has been a strategy for many women in Senegal to ensure the well being of their families in the absence of state investments and salaried state employment that was predominantly men's work. The prominence of women focused development associations has been at the center of the process of neoliberal reform in Senegal since the 1980s. As a result, associational spaces became injected with development funds, creating parallel economic activities managed by female leadership. Their positions as associational presidents primed women for state political positions. Newly armed with access to state funds, women politicians, both locally and nationally, reinvested in these associations or created new ones. Another politician I spent time with and documented her various campaigns is a, is a good example of this. In, in 2017, uh, when I met uh, Musli Djakate, she was a representative in parliament for Maki Sal's government and was seeking a third term. She led long established associations of women in her neighborhood and was sub subsequently discovered by a member of Talasila's political party due to her leadership within an association she created in her neighborhood. Talasila took her on to lead the Women's al Alliance within his party, Jeff Jill, an important opposition party to former President Abdullah Wad. On the eve of the 2017 parliamentary elections, for several weeks of allowed campaigning, I shadowed Musli and her campaign team as they visited every small crevice of the tightly packed homes nestled along the seaside neighborhoods of An Beler and Yarach in Dakar. You felt sim simultaneously squeezed by the walls, but then emerged to see the ocean only a few steps away, the beach lined with colorful fishing boats. Musli preferred to campaign within her district alone instead of scouring the Senegalese countryside with other part party members which which is different from, um, for example, Ida's uh, strategy. The the this photo that I show here um, takes place um, in a small town, sort of near Luga, which is where I Awa uh, is from. Um, and, and so, in Ida's campaign in twenty seventeen, she was campaigning to be what is called a a national representative. Um, and so in parliament, they have sort of two different types of um, representatives. They have those who are local and who are, you know, from a particular district or, or, or town. And then those who 
are said to represent national interests um, abroad. And so someone like Ida, who is quite well known, having been a minister, having been in politics for a long time, has the kind of visibility, popularity to campaign uh, and money to campaign nationally, whereas someone like Musli um, is really stays within kind of her her district. So she's she was a representative for An Beler Yarach in this part of uh, of the city of, of Dakar. Um, So with official aides and family members doubling as assistants in tow, we walked and greeted residents, stopping briefly in the homes of her association members to receive prayers and well wishes. Um, and, and so then in this, um, in this scenario here, um, we're up on this rooftop um, where she is addressing her, um, so the members of an association that is called um, Japo Jafchijam, Solidarity, Aid, and Peace, which is a sort of doubly political and kind of the distinction that I heard often was that, you know, certain things are political organizations, association, others are social, you know, and to the point where people say, I'm doing so, I'm doing social things, or I'm doing political things. And so um she sort of says well this is a social you know association this is about development projects this is about me helping um these women but really also it was you know a stop on her campaign trail a lot of these women are you know uh helped her with a side campaign that she had which was sort of the women's um association of Benabokayakar, which is makisa's uh coalition and so She's, um, and as you can see, kind of, I, I referred to Mariam Lowe's work on sort of titles of associations, you know, Solidarity, Aid and Peace is, has this kind of, you know, um, con the, the connection between um, these sort of moral, ethical, will of values with um, development projects. And, and so here she's addressing her, um, her, her members and, and in this um, one woman who you see with her gets up and says, you know, um, she's always honored me. She's always shown me love. And in, in that she's saying, Muslim Teral. Teral is sort of the, the comes from the same root Ter, which is to um, kind of the, the word, the verb Ter and Teranga have the same roots, which means sort of a moment of, of contact, a moment of um, of sort of two people um, becoming sort of part of a similar community, and so um, to say, you know, Musna uh, Materal, she's always sort of shown me um, honor by giving me money, by showing up for my events, you know, and so and so the language within these uh, associations is about is about Taranga. So women-led associations come continue to be spaces where development projects and agencies focus their efforts. For-profit outfits remain a source of funds for women and their projects of financial need. However, given the high interest rates of, the, of these loans and a tough economic climate for micro-enterprises, women are pioneering new modes of livelihood and making new kinds of political demands. Musli and her association are an example of this. She uses her political influence and resources to help support these women and their projects. She and many other politicians noted that for them, politics was about development and neither could happen without the other. And that as women become new leaders in patron client networks, they see themselves as moral alternatives to immoral financial institutions. Therefore, since the installment of Parité and the historic number of women elected to state politics, women's associations have become increasingly both the source 
and beneficiaries of female leadership. Because many develop, development organizations have proved in more than one case to be unsustainable, many women's associations have turned back to the social debt systems that women politicians can offer. These phenomena are what I call patrona client networks women-driven networks that target and benefit from women's economic activities. Women are strategically questioning the border between public and private by not only showing that the private is public, but also demonstrating that the private can be part of the public, in essence, using the social capital gained from Taranga among private networks and ceremonies to create political power. And although Aida and Musli arguably gain more financial and social authority and prestige from their supporters in what is essentially a mutually yet unequal relationship, women politicians are engaging in patrona client net networks that are intimately dependent upon their benevolence tied to the project of uplifting, uplifting other women. So, so with that, I want to sort of um, make some connections with the current um, political climate um, in Senegal. And, and to, to give an idea, so this picture is of Usman Sonko on the right and a woman named Adji Sar um, on the left. And um, about the time when um, Ida's coronation ceremony was going on was sort of, uh, as things were kind of heating up, um, when I was in Senegal last, between February and, and April last year, um, the, these, this tr the trial was happening um, regarding the accusation by, by Adjisar um, of rape uh, on the part of Usman Sonko. Um, and of course, there were, you know, lots of people were saying, you know, the huge debates about, well, you know, this was the Macky Sall and his government utilizing a woman to, you know, kind of take down an opposition leader. Um, and of course, supporters of Sonko were and are very much, you know, kind of blaming her in a sense or, or saying that, you know, it was... It, blaming Macky Sall for, for kind of political maneuvering. Um, and so then um, in, I think, June, July, he was um, he was actually sort of acquitted of the, the charges of, of, of rape, but was um, handed a sentence of two years for sort of inciting the youth or, or kind of creating a political situation, a, a violent, dangerous political situation. But what has been, um, and then at the same time, you have, you know, the, the campaigns for the, the candidates for the presidential election to be held this year, February 25th, are sort of taking shape, you know, people are starting their, their campaigns, uh, women such as Aida Mboj, um, uh, another woman who I talk extensively about in, in the book and who was Makisa's former prime minister, Aminata Ture, um, and I believe two or three other female candidates um, were sort of launch, launching their campaign. So you have this really contentious, um, uh, as I mentioned in, in the beginning, this very contentious uh, political space of um, the major uh, of just the the political maneuverings of Makisal, people weren't sure if he was going to actually run or not. He was not being clear, and even after he declared that he he wouldn't run, um, the 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 discourse was all about either you know these two men or these these male candidates, and then kind of this woman, um, Ajisar, um, that that similar to what I mentioned about sort of women's presence in politics and in public space in general, sort of seen, are seen as sort of dis disrupting, right? The, the political norm, which is um, patriarchal. Um, and, and so we see this again with the re reaction to Ajisar and her accusations. 
Um, and then once the, the verdict was handed down um, and putting into question whether Sonko could actually run because he's in jail now, um, she became kind of victimized as, um, as well, it's her fault, right, that, um, that this situation is going on and it's her fault that, um, that Sonko is in this position and, and if, you know, if he could just run. If, and so the, the conversation um, is still about sort of, if, if the conversation is about women at all, it's really about sort of them polluting, corrupting the, the political space and political process. And so these female candidates, one, they all were um, found to be ineligible to actually run for presidency. So all of them are currently out. We don't know when the election is actually gonna happen. Um, Aidan Boj, sort of as suspected, and as well as Amina Tature has have backed um, Sanko and his other um, party candidate. And so, there's this we've been in the current moment right that as women have made themselves relevant and have made waves into uh senegalese politics they still um they still are just uh up against um up against kind of a society that's not quite i think ready to um to take them seriously um, so I'll leave it at that, and certainly I would like to um, leave it for questions. And, and thank you so much, you know, to MSU African Studies, um, my home department of 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 anthropology at MSU, my um, dear doctoral committee Chantal, Laura, and Ferguson, Najib, um, Fulbright. Also, I made this some of this um possible i should have i should also say the west african research center as they um funded some of the uh the, the research project that i did in 2017 which is a big part of the book um and of course uh, as i mentioned there are many other women in the book but in the example that i gave um aida musli um all of them were opened their lives to me opened their homes opened their private public spaces to me. And, and obviously this project <laughs> wouldn't have been possible with all of those actors. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I'd love to answer any questions that anyone might have. Thank you very much, Emily, for that presentation. Uh, and anybody who wants to ask a question, you can unmute. You can raise your hand first and I unmute you and you can ask a live. Or you can type your questions on the Q&A section. So those are the two options for asking questions. And I think you have one question in the phone. Yeah, so I'll just start with that as people kind of think of uh, so the person asks, um, you state that there is a wolofization of Senegal. Are there other ethnic groups resisting this dominance? Um, yes, um, I, I think, well, you have, I mean, for, for one, you have the long-term sort of conflict of the southern part of Senegal, the, the Casamance, um, which is kind of interesting in the context of um, Son Usman Sonko um, now as kind of the main opposition candidate that he's the, was the mayor of Ziegenshore, which is the main city in, in, in the Casamance. And so um, the, that conflict has been um going on for for a long time since the since the 60s 70s um and has had peak moments obviously and i i don't know their the resistance is not necessarily about um the 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 language piece but certainly sort of the the economic um and i should say that the casamans really is sort of the the most uh, the the main producer, kind of agricultural producer of the of 
of the country because it's much more it's it's more southern it's more lush it has a lot um of uh you know it's whereas the north of the of the gambia is really sort of desert and so the there have been kind of separatist movements in the in the south that have opposed kind of the economic political policies of of the state that have really um marginalized them um in, in many ways and so i think that that would be the main um the main group i think there are sort of in terms of language um there are some there have been some sort of pular um ethnic groups that have um attempted to open up a, a conversation about um about the marginalization of 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 pular and other languages you you do see now like t on tv there are efforts to have um news programs um conducted in soninke or or pular but again they kind of continue to um uh remain um let's see so my dear um advisor Chantal has a um a question um interested in knowing whether female politicians make appeals to nobility lineages and whether these tactics are aligned with Teranga or not. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is exactly what Ida was doing in her, um, in her, in this event, in her, the ceremony crowning her as a queen. Um, and, and she is constantly in, in political speeches, um, relating herself to um you know her last name Bodge um is the same as the so she's from the kind of royal family Bodge that comes from the the Wallo kingdom um of which the the main kind of what most well-known queen uh Ndate Yalam Bodge um was very influential and so yeah, as well as um, Aysa Tatal Sal, who is the current um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, and I spent time with her on her campaign. She, um, who is from the, the Futa area of northern Senegal and, and is Pular, she um, makes references not just to kind of the, the nobility lineage, but also to the sort of religious nobility um be her being from the Tal family who is um uh tied to uh Nurotal who was a kind of a jihadist uh in the 1700s and so yeah they they're all kind of situating themselves and so and I I didn't quite you know talk about it so much, but that part of their own construction of this kind of um, feminine subjectivity, uh, authoritative subjectivity comes from aligning themselves with um, with no nobility, with, uh, with specific marabous, with specific, um, um, what do you call it? With specific sort of religious uh, leadership, um, which gives them, and, and so one of the also chapters of the book is about specifically how Aida and Musli, who are um, very implanted in the Murid Sufi community, um, sort of navigate their religious identities, the, the 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 ideas about sort of what it means to be a good woman, what it means to be a good murid woman, um, and also negotiating that identity with the 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 with parité and and their position as women in politics that in some ways um, sort of go against um, kind of what many like many in Tuba, the main um the main holy city of of Murids, for example, they're the only kind of the main one of the reasons why the parité percentage has really only 
gone up to 47% is be partly because uh, the district of Tuva often doesn't respect um, their list as as being, you know, man, woman, man, woman. And so that often causes um, issues, but people don't sort of, the 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 weight that the Murid family has within politics, people don't quite um, do anything about it. And so the chapter is kind of thinking about like, how are they negotiating these, these what seem sometimes as opposing, uh, opposing possibilities, identities um, for kind of as part of their political strategy. Um, I think we can, uh, Solomon, you can unmute and ask your question. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, Solomon from Kampala, Uganda, university lecturer, lecturing history. Oh, um, yes, I, I'm also a writer. I am writing one of the books entitled The Invention of Poverty in Africa. It will come out soon. Uh, now, I have two observations in the form of questions. Uh, our presenter made it so well, but am I right to summarize your presentation this way? That in the Teranga Republic, which is, a, I think it is a micro, microcosm of Senegalese society, men are humans. Women are the shadows. The Wolof are the soul of Senegalese society. Am I right to picture your presentation that way? Let me repeat. Men are the humans. Because they take everything, every right. Women are the shadows of society because they are neglected. They have to use their femininity to survive and to survive society and families. They use their femininity to survive and to survive society and, and, and families. Two, why did you choose to use a member of the royal family to argue your case of wolfization of uh, Senegalese society. Why did you pick an ordinary figure? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, I think um, I, I, it's, it's so complex. <laughs> um, so, I think um, I suppose you could, um, you know, try. You could characterize um, this the 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 kind of relationship of uh, as you stated. I, I do think um, that, um, and I didn't say it here in this talk, but I, certainly men are subject to you know their own um possibilities and and, and limitations and one one space i can i can think about that is that in a way i i think women often have almost um more sort of possibilities for um social mobility political mobility uh because they have, because they're not limited just to, e even though I think society sort of has has limited them sort of to a kind of uh, political economy that is informal, that is um, that is domestic, um, that they're demonstrating. You know what I'm trying to argue is that they are using they they are using those spaces and those possibilities that are seen as limitations to create or to create new possibilities for themselves that I think sometimes men don't have um, have those possibilities. And so um, uh, so I think, you know, if you're thinking about the metaphors that you're using, sort of women kind of 
using operating from kind of within these shadows and and then trying to um within the the kind of uh shadowed spaces or marginal spaces in which they have kind of at times operated um they are using that as a way to uh break into um into pu public space and, and public politics. And so I think um, Ida is, um, and I and I should say this, that all I'm interested in not just gender, but I'm interested in the, the, the complex ways in which other types of hierarchies are working, right? So class, caste, um, you know, thing, age groups, um, and, and I develop that further in the book because those are also really important um, parts of what possibilities certain women have that are more than some women and men or that are more than some women, you know, and so um, I think what Ida and many of the other women the four the four kind of main women of the book that are that are parliamentarians and and work in the ministry um are are elite women right and so their eliteness provides a specific way of um a, of specific possibilities that other women don't and so i'm interested in sort of those what i call like sort of the visible ways in which these elite women are able to work out these negotiations in the public space. Um, but I'm also interested in the kind of less visible uh, women who are now, who, who have kind of traditionally always helped men's campaigns. And now as some elite women are breaking into, you know, um, public politics that they're riding on different coattails of, of that provide different possibilities because I think the women, the elite women that are emerging from these kinds of associations are um, are also using the women within those, you know, giving back to the women in those associations, which I think is quite different from most men's campaigns, if that sort of makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, so it looks like Joey has a um, hi, Joey. <laughs> um, be nice to like see your guys' faces, but um, so um, the question is: While you were doing research, did you um, did did something about Teranga constraining or burdening female politicians? I've seen articles about how patron client networks are difficult for politicians on the content to continent to manage. I'm wondering if this is ever the case for, yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the parts of, uh, th that I kind of lay out in other, in the first part of the book is just how much, and that's why I call it social labor, <laughs> because it is extremely, um, it, it's, it's work. It's, it's maintain, constantly maintaining these networks, constantly maintaining sort of, and not even just in, in question of politics, just listening to the, the amount of work and calculation, but improvisation that goes into sort of sustaining and maintaining these, these networks of Taranga um, are, are super, intricate and involved and so i think then you know especially um polit female politicians feel that and and i'll give like a little anecdote i remember being in a a woman's office a parliamentary parliamentarian's office and she received a phone call where it was sort of like a, a person needed help with their rent because they were having problems and that they're in they're sort of a I don't know if they were a friend or if they were just a constituent. Um, and I remember sort of the comment after the, the politician hung up was sort of like, you know, why do all these people expect me to do so much, right? And so there's a, I think part of also the, the 
the the question of corruption, right, which I didn't talk about here, but the the question of I think corruption is much more complicated because um, it's not just you know it, it, it's it's a dialectic between you know a, what people expect of politicians, right, which is also what they expect of each other at different points, you know, is is uh, is I think something that should be considered and is so. I think, yeah, politicians feel this pressure to always stop what they're doing, go to a funeral, always stop what they're doing, going to a a, a a a wedding, right? Because these ceremonies are spaces in which they do politics. Um, that means, you know, being present, providing uh, money and support for, for those events, um, you know, which again, most women do but it's sort of on a larger scale when, when we're talking about um, politics. So yeah, thanks for the question. Um, let's see, got me as a question, presentation got me to reflect on methods of popular mobilization and post-colonial Senegalese politics. So far, no female politician has emerged as president of Senegal. Is this a result of the limitations current strategy? Or is there more um, at work? Um, I think part of what I argue is that honestly, I think again, women have been um, kind of the the foundation of men's campaigns, pretty much always. <laughs> um, I, and I don't feel I, I feel like I can make that claim because so much of the you know the the rallies the organization the the rallies that are basically like ceremonies it's women who are cooking it's women who are organizing it's women who are animating you know the um that are that are there sort of adoring the politician right and so the whole space is kind of constructed by women and so in a way i think women are actually much more equipped <laughs> because they've been doing it and because it's sort of part of their, you know, how they, they, they socialize, um, that they're much more equipped to kind of run their own campaigns and, and to, and to mobilize. And so I think, I don't think that, I mean, I'm certainly think that, you know, women having the money, um, that a male politician would have is, is one thing, right? So that, that's a limitation. I also think that, um, another issue is just again with this pat with this current presidential um, election coming up, the 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 rule is that in order to become a, a viable candidate, um, the candidates have to come up with what what they call parrainage, which is about ten thousand signatures of people from you know a specific number of different districts showing their support saying you know we will vote for this person right and so pretty much across the board not just women but all of all of the women candidates versus some of the male candidates right were found ineligible because of honestly very sort of arbitrary issues like oh you know this signature is ineligible or you don't have enough because the this amount of people doesn't count right and so um I think they have, you know, they have kind of the 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 state political infrastructure against them. Um, and so I think it's more and also, you know, maybe they didn't get enough signatures because I think generally speaking, people just are very wary to vote for uh, women politicians because, you know, Senegalese society continues to be, I think, um, to really see women as, you know, right, part of kind of dis, uh, disrupting the, the public space that they don't take them seriously. And part of not taking them seriously in this disruption is that I heard so often was that women represent this kind of folkloric, um, right, uh, way of doing politics, which even though it is basically how they have supported men's campaigns <laughs> um, over the years, they sort of tie that to women not being serious enough, women not being um, educated enough, 
right? And so I think there's just a huge bias against women. So I don't think it's so much about their mobilization, except for maybe the money part, but it's about how people perceive and take seriously women, women in politics. Um, and okay, so Maria Maso says, in the case of the 2021 um, political situation with the alleged weaponization of rape against a political opponent, do you believe that having more women in Taranga political helped legitimize the claims that the legal situation between Adisar and Sonko was a political setup? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I mean, Maybe. I mean, I, I there's a really great um, article written by the sort of an Africanist, African feminist um, group. Uh, do I have it here? I guess I, oh, it's called, by Le Monde. It's in English. It's called, is time for Senegalese women to stop being treated as second class citizens? There's, there's that one that's sort of about, um, you know, kind of the backsliding of 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 parité, um, but there's also another one. Um, if you're interested, I can you know um, send it to you, Mariama, about by the feminist network about sort of the 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 issues of um, uh, yeah of basically calling out you know kind of society saying that like you know we we shouldn't be blaming. Ajisar, because in 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 any case, whether um, it's actually true, and he did rape her, that she's becoming, you know, um, just uh, people are, you know, she's people are blaming her for the situation that that she should have just whatever. He's a political figure that that we need him to take down Makisal, right? Or in the case that. If uh, Makisal actually sort of hired her, um, and that that she then you know should have thought again of the political situation, you know, not taking, I think the what female politicians and feminist groups sort of have brought to this is making you know making the case for um, that that women are constantly sort of that if women are thought about in public space at all right that they're only thought of as you know disruptors that they're only thought of as um you know uh and, and so i think you know what women politicians can can bring to that is is sort of making people consider the um the kind of patronizing um uh accusations that that people are making um and so I think that's part of the case too, right? Is that women um, argue that if if um, if there are more women in politics, if there are more women in parliament, there are there are more laws that um, that will be sort of beneficial to women, right? Which is not always the case. I mean, as we see in the U.S., certainly, you know, women don't always vote for women's issues. Uh, so. But that's certainly, I think, part of the discourse, right? That if the more women's voices in, 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 in the book, I make this distinction, right? Actually, Nwando Achebe makes makes this distinction in her book that there's a difference between power and a difference between authority, and the dip, you know, power is having, you know, particular, you know, say within a home, a woman can be. Um, very powerful she has a voice of her own and everything but she may not have the authority to actually do anything about it right and so i think that's the distinction that i'm interested in um in 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 how these women are trying to create authority for themselves in a in a political system and society that um, is is very happy to kind of say like oh you know this queen and you know these the the long history of women um, in Senegalese society have has been has been this you know we have this legacy look we don't need you know we don't have problems with women but when you look at even women who are in parliament say there's forty seven percent of parliament is women but where are they in you know 
actual decision making committees, right? And that's where you really start to see the the limitations. Um, and so I think still there's this kind of symbolic female power <laughs> that you know uh, the uh, the authority to do much about it is is different. Um, thank you, Mariam. Um, Anna Wood, um, do you see this emphasis on Teranga constricting the ways that male politicians can claim to be carrying out social actions as opposed to political ones? Hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure if I totally understand um, the question. Uh, I, I suppose I'm not sure quite what you mean by social actions, but um, I I think I think sort of like what I said earlier that um, that in some ways you know women have kind of the advantage of being a little bit more versatile. Um, uh, for example, I think you know economically speaking. A woman, you know, could do um, uh, break into uh, jobs that are, are are traditionally kind of thought to be men's men's work, whereas I, you know, would be very hard for um, men to um, be maids, right? Like socially, that's that's on kind of unacceptable, um, and so in that sense, I think there's a little bit more of like an interesting social political mobility that 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 women have access to. Um, so I was interested in when you spoke about women in their associations, saying um, some sometimes they were something they were carrying out social actions and sometimes political ones. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, and I think yeah. So I think that's kind of part. So what what I was referring to, sort of in in terms of um like sort of political action, social or like sort of I'm doing politics, I'm doing social, right? Like I heard you know, um, a lot of time like in sort of just daily conversations I heard or when people women were talking to me about the kinds of things that they're doing in 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 associations, they made the the. The connection between what is social right which is like doing development projects or or doing um doing uh money pooling groups that help them pay for um for ceremonies right um and uh and then the kind of political which is even though what I find, you know, kind of really got me interested in this project was that there's not so much like I, I don't see this clear border right between the social and the political. And and so and I think that is something that is particularly more open to women because men, although they do have um, they do uh, they do have like family uh, associations that are sort of part of, which is kind of more just based on within the the family, particularly where they pull money together. They don't have um, kind of the outlets that women have in terms of associations, um, you know, and which is very much steeped in this, the, the engagement with um, kind of post-structural adjustment development projects, right, that targeted women's associations. But even before that, women have been organizing and, and, and coming together for, you know, all kinds of reasons for money pooling, for eight within age groups, you know, solidarity groups that are just about, you know, women's spaces where they um, get together. Um, because I think in many ways, there's a lot of sort of segregation by gender right and and age too but especially gender where it's sort of like women operate in these spaces and then men sort of socialize in different ways but oftentimes men don't have that organizing um space to really and so kind of politics has been i suppose 
where men have really uh, done kind of similar things. So I don't think they have um, that. And that's why really I think they've depended upon women to be that ceremonial social part of their political campaigns because they don't, uh, you know, it's not quite how they how they operate otherwise. Um, hopefully that <laughs> answered your question. Um, and that's, yeah, I just think that there's so much, um, even as women are are very limited, they're, they, they have kind of more room, I think, for creative possibilities um, in terms of organizing, um, supporting one another, right? I really think a, a big key of, uh, you know, one of the women that I spent time with that was part of Musli Jahate's association was being kind of vetted and and groomed by Musli to run for like local office, you know, I think of like the a mayorship of of the district we were in. And so I think through these associations, women are are starting to um not just I mean we're I'm talking more about like large kind of scale big politics, but sort of local politics, I think. I think we're gonna see more female participation as they are mentored by, you know, some of these other politicians. Well, thank you very much, Emily. I think we're out of time. It's 1.31. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much, Emily, for a wonderful presentation. And hopefully we'll have you in Emmy's Island thing soon. For, yes, uh, I, I hope so. Um, I I really um, thank you so much for having me, everyone. Um, I wish I had sort of <laughs> seen um, you know more people, but um, I'm just happy to happy to have the conversation. And yeah, I hope to really be back at MSU soon. So thank you so much for having me. That thank you, and thank you to everybody who came and asked a question. We'll see you next time. <laughs>